The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Dyke and & Brands. Today, we are joined here with Darren Squires. He is the Director of Pay-Per-Click with CI Web Group. Darren, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. So, Darren, tell me a little bit about yourself. How in the world did you get into the world of Pay-Per-Click and uh, websites and, and working with CI Web Group? Well, at the time, I was doing some consulting with a commercial air conditioning company, and uh, they wanted me to manage a project of redesigning the website. Uh, I ended up uh, connecting with uh, Jennifer Bagley and CI Web Group uh, for the redesign. That went extremely well. Um, they ended up bringing me on to help with operations, and uh, that's really where I got started, and I guess that's been probably close to 10, 12 years ago. Okay. In your years of, of working with pay-per-click, it's changed quite a bit, uh, the landscape of, of, of what it is. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see HVAC companies do with pay-per-click today? Wow, we see so many mistakes happen. Um, probably some of the biggest ones are not having an appropriate budget for the size of the company. Hmm. Um, a lot of companies either underspend or overspend by a lot, um, or they will misallocate where they should be spending their money. Uh, typically, you want to look at what is the most productive way that I can spend my money to generate leads. And as you get bigger and you need more leads, then you have to buy more expensive leads. Mm. And so seeing that big difference is probably one of the biggest ones. This Probably the second one is not taking ownership of their marketing. Um, we see a lot of companies that have gone through multiple people or multiple marketing companies, and they don't pay attention to what's happening. They're, they're not digging into the numbers. They're not understanding what this company is doing. And in a lot of cases, those companies will uh, either pad the numbers, uh, misinform them, or just not send any reporting at all. Mm. So they don't know where that money is actually going and what they're getting for it. No, you always talk about the lead funnel, and it's interesting when you look at it. Uh, I think depending on who you're talking to, uh, the word or term lead can mean different things to different people. I, I know uh, from an HVAC contractor side, uh, I didn't determine anything was a lead until we actually had an appointment that was set, and we were going out and running that particular lead that we had. Uh, however, when I talk to a lot of digital marketing advertising companies, they may define lead as that actual click to the website. And there's a lot of things that happen in between that click to the website and the actual appointment and going out and visiting with the consumer. And so it's really important to clarify terms. Uh, to your point, when you're putting those reports together and trying to determine you know, just what is the direct outcome or impact that... Uh, you're actually having with those dollars that you're investing. Absolutely. In fact, last week uh, we were working with a company that we had taken on from a previous marketing agency. Mm -hmm. And the previous marketing agency was counting uh, things like directions to their location as a lead, um, <laughs> which, I mean, in our business, that's not, not realistic. They had a uh, number of pages visited time on site as a uh, lead, lead generation. And, you know, in our particular case, we define leads as specifically two things. They either filled out an inquiry form mm -hmm. or they made a phone call that was engaging. And by engaging, I mean at least 60 seconds. So okay. we're, not count we're not counting um, wrong numbers. We're not counting phone calls. Oh, I meant to call somebody else. Um, we really try and narrow it down to meaningful metrics. How often do you see pay-per-click, people, again, spending money to make some sort of activity happen, and they have that phone call, and then it ends up going to voicemail 
or, uh, you know, it never really connects with anybody. That is another big area of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, we deal with a lot of companies where we're having to audit their phone calls. They're saying, well, we're not getting any phone calls. And we go back and we look at the logs. And the great thing about today is there's a lot of stuff that could be measured, including mm -hmm. phone calls. And we can go back and say, well, you know, you had three phone calls between 10 and 11 o'clock this morning that went to voicemail. Um, so we can attribute the problem to the right area. Right. And so if you're going to spend the money, please make sure <laughs> that you actually are, are there to respond uh, when you're when you're spending the money for it. Uh, when we look at paid search ads, how does it differ from Google local service uh, ads for HVAC businesses? So typically, we recommend the Google local services ads are implemented and maximized first because they tend to be uh, better quality and lower cost. Mm -hmm. When you look at the search results, they will typically be that first row of vendors that's listed. Uh, below that is the paid search area. It's a little bit more expanded um, and you have a lot more control over what you can do. It's easier to turn the dials on and off for paid search, but the value for the local service ads is definitely uh, first play. And then you've got search campaigns, right? Uh, smart campaigns and, and performance max campaigns. Uh, what are the differences between all of those different types of campaigns that you may do in pay-per-click? So earlier on, you said, you know, or mentioned that I've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah. When I originally started doing this, the only thing you had were exact match phrases, meaning that you had to figure out every single possible variation of what somebody might type in and put all of that into your account. And what we've seen over time is Google, especially in the last few years, has really started to go more towards the artificial intelligence and smarter campaigns. Mm. So a search campaign specifically is you type in a phrase or you, or you target a phrase, and then when somebody types that phrase, your ad is likely to show up. A smart campaign is, uh, was Google's answer to the complexity of the search campaigns. Very watered down. Uh, very limited in what you can do. You typically put in 10 to 15 phrases, uh, and that's about all you get other than a geography. The Performance Max campaigns uh, came into uh, play about a year and a half ago, and they were an answer to the fact that nobody liked the display campaigns, which we didn't mention, mm. but um, display campaigns are typically images, and they're put on other websites they're more interruptional, whereas mm. the search is a direct response and action uh, type of situation. Wasn't getting the same performance out of the display, so they came up with Performance Max, which is a hybrid. It takes uh, all of your assets, including uh, keywords, uh, descriptions, titles, images, video assets, takes all of that stuff, and uses its artificial intelligence secret formula and goes out and puts your ad wherever it thinks is going to be the most successful to get somebody to come to your website and convert. And interestingly, we were just doing some uh, metric uh, measurements over the last year. Performance Max campaigns, 99.5% of those clicks were on a mobile phone. Hmm. And so you're seeing a, a much a bigger shift. And I know me personally, a lot of stuff is done through the phone versus uh, on a laptop or a, a desktop even. Yeah. In fact, uh, that got us looking into some more data. And we found that 80% of even the search campaigns, the traffic was going to the website from a mobile phone. So I, I've heard a lot of contractors, they've talked about it and they said, hey, look, I, I go ahead and I search HVAC contractor and I'm on page one of Google, so I've got my search engine optimization uh, taken care of. Uh, and we both heard Jennifer speak many, many times as, as she gets up in front of groups and, and talks about, you gotta put your consumer hat on and you gotta think about what is it a consumer? And most consumers can't even spell HVAC, uh, much less uh, that's what they're gonna be searching for, right? They're looking for, uh, in some parts of the country, maybe it's, uh, it's gonna be a uh, furnace repair or furnace replacement. Maybe in other parts, it's going to be heater repair, heater replacement. And in other places, 
Uh, even if they have a forced air system, they're still calling it a boiler and they're asking for a boiler uh, repair or, or boiler replacement. And, and so it, it's interesting as you look at that, if I have a limited budget uh, in my marketing and advertising and I'm trying to figure out how to get the most uh, return on what I'm going to invest, what are some of the things that a contractor should be doing uh, if they're going to focus on maybe two or three key terms that they really want to maximize for? Uh, and how far ahead should they start planning uh, as we're coming into the season? Right now, uh, you know, winter's upon us, right? It, it's cool out, and uh, a lot of people are starting to think about their tune-ups or maybe service calls as they're turning systems on and it's not working. Uh, right now is probably not the right time to be planning to uh, promote uh, heating repair. I probably should have been thinking about that back in June or July, right? Well, it depends on the strategies that you're taking yeah. and that the strategies all depend on the size of the company. Um, when you're a smaller company, we typically recommend that you start with a two-tiered uh, approach of maybe some local service ads and some uh, search engine optimization. And, mm -hmm. and you'd mentioned that earlier about the search engine optimization. Uh, there's about, from a paid search standpoint, there's about 20 phrases, depending on your category, uh, that are going to get the lion's share of your search results. However, with the SEO piece, you get a much more uh, research-oriented individual, and they tend to use longer-tailed phrases. By longer tail, I mean there's more words in that phrase mm -hmm. that they're searching. And if you're doing your uh, search engine optimization correctly, then you're the first person that they see, not just for HVAC, but HVAC in city X or city Y or in county or uh, in city and state. We, in fact, we were talking to a, a client yesterday. Uh, did you know that Portland, there are 22 Portlands in the United States? <laughs> And if you're not putting Portland, Oregon or Portland, Maine in your titles and descriptions, you may be getting SEO value for traffic that is not going to be of any value to you. That was funny. I was talking to one customer and they found out that uh, the provider they had was paying for pay-per-click that they were paying for. And uh, most of the pay-per-click that they paid for was coming out of India. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we do to uh, mitigate that is we actually within the AdWords platform you can put in negative locations mm -hmm. and so we as part of our default procedure we put in a negative for every country outside of the United States mm -hmm. and then depending on the client we will put in a negative for every state outside of their state if they're border we may leave two states and then in some cases, we will even go in and put negative counties outside mm. of the counties that they go for. But um, again, that goes back to the point of they've got to own their marketing and understand what the company they're working with is actually doing. With a lot of these ads, there's limited space that you have, right? How does a contractor take their unique selling proposition they have and make sure that it really stands out in that limited space they have? A lot of experimentation. Um, typically, we're looking for a value proposition, a differentiator, and a call to action in that ad. And typically, you only got about 30 characters to do your title and anywhere from 90 to 120 characters to do your description. So you need to look at a point that you made earlier, which was uh, what makes you stand out, what's important to you, as a consumer, and then as the HVAC provider, mm -hmm. you need to think what's important to them. Not, And we find this in a lot of other things where in our industry we use acronyms uh, that may not be mm -hmm. common to people. And so it's important that you write it for the person that you're trying to target. Are there specific ad copy techniques that work well within the HVAC industry? There are certain things, but all of this, you need to do testing. Mm -hmm. um, but there are certain things where you're asking a question sometimes uh, that I've seen really a big uplift in click-through rates, which a click-through rate is how often people actually click on your ad when they see it. And 
if you put a question in there, like having problems with your air conditioner or, uh, you know, are you feeling chilly? Are you feeling cold? But again, all of these, again, are going to have to be uh, regional tested and A-B tested against other things because you may find the one nugget that doubles your click-through rate and Google rewards high performance with lower cost. Hmm. How would you uh, talk to an individual about structuring their keywords that they're putting into their search campaign? You know, what are some of the things that you've learned? You've talked a lot about measurement, right? And so, yes, you definitely have to measure and see what works. But uh, are there any tricks or, or tips that you can give in structuring those keywords that they're putting together? So Google has a tool that we use that gives you a pretty good idea of the volume of search for particular phrases. But you also, again, need to look at what's the intent behind those phrases. Uh, the word plumber and plumbing are variations of the same word, but people aren't typing in uh, plumbing if they're looking for a plumber, they're typing in plumber. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at the volume of the words, but also the intent of the words. And then when you actually get into the campaigns themselves, you want to try and structure those very tightly so that you only may have 10 or 20 phrases that go with a specific ad and go to a specific landing page. The more relevant and related the phrase, the ad, and the landing page are, the more likelihood you are to get a conversion. And that's really what it's all about is conversions. And if you can double your conversion rate, you've actually stretched that same dollar twice as far. Hmm. Speaking about dollars, how much should I spend on all of the, the advertising that I do? What buckets should I be putting that money into? Uh, you know, uh, I, I think that's the, the big question a lot of contractors have. Is it a different spend if I'm a startup uh, versus somebody that uh, is maybe been in, in business for five to 10 years versus somebody that's very mature, maybe that's a, a third or fourth generation company and uh, just looking to maintain the business um, or as my strategy is to grow. Um, what, what advice can you give somebody when they're trying to figure out? Sure. So yes, there is different numbers based on where you are in your phase of your business. Um, I wouldn't say age as much okay. as size of the business. Okay. When you're a small business and you don't have a large cash flow, um, it's important that you're getting those leads as, with as little cost as possible. Mm. Uh, SEO is a great place, tends to be one of the least expensive leads other than uh, reaching out to the customers you already have, mm -hmm. uh, but it takes time takes time to build up uh, and sometimes, I mean, you can't wait three, six months to have your first lead. So you've got to offset that with something that's sooner. But the SEO gives you a compounding interest, whereas the other stuff like the LSA stuff um, is going to be immediate, but you're not going to get that benefit from it tomorrow. It's, if you don't get the lead today, it's gone. Now, as you get bigger, and we mentioned this earlier, you're going to have to expand out to get more leads in order to keep feed mm -hmm. all of your people. And so you're going to have to spend a little bit more to get those leads. Uh, that's where you start to spend more on things like paid search. You know, one of the things we work a lot with Ruth King, and, and she says this all the time. She says, you know, you got to measure and, and you got to, you got to look at the results. And so, is that activity making me money? We'll do more of that. Is that activity not making me money? Do less of that. And so, you know, I think when people think about budgeting, it's not necessarily, hey, you spend this X amount of percentage or spend X amount of dollars based on what you're doing, but it's uh, keep doing the things that are working and do more of that. Stop doing the things that are not working and uh, and continue to test, right? Continue to experiment and and, and try to figure out what that uh, the magic solution is. How would you go about, uh, you know, in the bidding process, trying to figure out, I mean, I think, because that's probably the other big confusing piece, right? How do I make sure 
that the money that I am spending is going to be spent well. Uh, what advice can you give people when they're trying to bid out different providers that are out there? I would highly recommend that you vet whoever your marketing agency is going to be or whatever channels you're going to be using. Uh, you vet them well. Uh, and by vet them, I mean you ask for references, you ask for uh, case studies, mm. results that you've had in the past, uh, and then transparency. It's a big red flag if they're not willing to uh, show you what's going on, show you the numbers, how they're measuring it. Uh, you know, our policy, we don't even have contracts because we are confident enough in our work. And when a client calls, we have no problem getting on a screen with them and screen sharing their AdWords account with them and going through the numbers so that there is no question, is this factual or not? You know, technology has grown leaps and bounds from when the internet first came out in the 1990s. And, and we look at, uh, you know, I think you look at all the generations, iterations of the web, right? We're in web 3.0 today. Uh, as we look at it, and who knows what the future is going to lead to. And you mentioned AI already and, and, and what that can bring for us. But uh, one technology that's interesting, I think, is geotargeting. How can an HVAC contractor leverage geotargeting to really help them uh, improve the performance of their spend that they have? So th for those that don't know what geotargeting is, mm -hmm. it's basically a invisible fence that's put around a specific location. And the interesting thing with all the data that's out there now, you can filter down to, let's say you want a house that is a certain age range, was initial owner, and was of a certain uh, square footage that had a certain household income, was a married couple, uh, and, and you're trying to predict when those units are gonna start to fail, you can narrow down to just the people that have houses that are in that age range where that unit's gonna start to fail and spend money on advertising just to those people. Mm. It's a really interesting uh, technology. I also know uh, people have used the, the geo-targeting uh, like at uh, the entrance to various uh, home improvement stores and different things like that. If somebody's looking to do home improvement projects, maybe they're more uh, open to looking at heating and air conditioning systems. Do you have any advice for just looking into the, the behavior of consumers and what they're doing? And Well, it's, that's an interesting process, and I would say test. Okay. Always test, yep. always test. Um, if it works, Great, and it may be that you find that people that go to Lowe's may be more likely to convert than people that go to Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, just because the Home Depot people are more self-doers and the Lowe's people are more homeowners that are just tinkering. Okay. You know, another interesting thing that you can do with the geofencing, and this gets into a little bit of a gray area, but if you're an expanding company and you have competitors that you know may not be doing so well, and you're wanting to get some of their employees, uh, you can geotarget their location and run ads that we're hiring. Hmm. Okay. You know, we've talked a lot about measuring, tracking. What are some key performance indicators that HVAC companies should be looking at? Uh, what are some of those key metrics that they should really be tying into? So when you're specifically talking about paid search, mm -hmm. the number one uh, metric is going to be your CPA or cost per acquisition. Mm -hmm. And in our industry, when we refer to acquisition, we're talking about the lead acquisition. Um, you had mentioned earlier about actually booking the business and going out and making some money. Mm -hmm. Two different things, and you need to make sure that you're you know keeping those separate in your mind. But the lower the cost per acquisition, uh, the lower your lead cost is. That's probably the biggest one. Now, from our standpoint, when we're trying to get that low CPA, we're looking at how the click-through rate is. You know, is, do we have a 2% click-through rate or a 10% click-through rate on this ad? Is the keyword having a higher low click-through rate? And that can indicate either the message is off or that it's the wrong phrase. Hmm. So you want to dig into those things, and you should have a uh, marketing agency that's digging into those for you 
and telling you which ones are good or bad on a regular basis. How can a business analyze all the campaign data? I, I think that uh, probably the hardest thing is, is we live in a world of, of data overload. There's, there's a lot of data out there, but how do you organize it and actually analyze it and then put it all together? I don't know how to fix an air conditioning unit. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't expect somebody that's running an HVAC company to understand all the details. However, as I mentioned earlier, it is critical that you own your marketing and you understand it. And the biggest thing is talk to your experts. And if you talk to them enough, you will start to get an understanding of whether they're good or bad at what they do. Okay. How can HVAC companies stay informed about the latest paid search trends and changes that are out there? It is happening so fast in so many different directions that it's difficult even for somebody that does it 24 seven to stay up to date on everything. You need experts. However, if you're adamant about keeping up to date, there are some really good blogs out there. There's a search engine land, search engine journal, um, Moz is another one. Um, all of these have blogs that you can go to and subscribe to and, and pick up articles on a regular basis about what's going on. So what emerging technologies do you see today that are probably going to be impacting paid search in the next year or two? Probably the biggest one, and everybody's heard this buzzword, is AI or artificial intelligence. Mm. It could potentially really change the landscape of online marketing. And so we're keeping a pulse on it. Um, we're up to date on the articles that are coming out and we're doing testing on different stuff. But you could, in the next couple of years, see a real big difference in the uh, information that's fed to you when you do searches. And then how does the small local contractor compete against the national players that are out there? I would say you got to be smart, you got to be nimble, and you need to be partnered with people that you can trust to act in your best interest. That would be absolutely the number one, transparency and a trust in the people you're working with. What are common pitfalls or mistakes that HVAC businesses should avoid with their paid search strategies? I asked that question at the very beginning. I'm gonna kind of end with that. Uh, is there anything that you want our guests to kind of think about? Yeah, again, right budget for your business and your size and what you're comfortable with, but also marketing in the right areas. Don't be spending money on paid search at $100, $115 a lead when you can be getting them for $40 to $70 a lead for uh, local service ads. Uh, and if you're not maximizing your database, if you're, not, if you're not advertising to the customer you've already serviced and given good service to, then that's money wasted and opportunities wasted. Well, thank you so much for being here. And for all of our guests that are out there, please go ahead and like this episode if you'd like to see more of these types of episodes as we're going forward. And also make sure you follow us so you can be up informed of all of the up-to-date uh, new shows that we have coming out. Uh, Darren, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. I look forward to having you on our future shows. Man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.